Hi, this is John from Chicago. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I have an um, interesting uh, video for you. This is uh, four ultralight um, racing quads that I'm going to talk about today. The uh, ultralights are becoming quite popular and they're fast. Uh, Andy RC, uh, he built a floss and he did his flight test today and he had a uh, speed of 117 miles an hour with a radar gun on his. He has slightly bigger motors than what I'm going to use here. Um, and Stu also did um, his builds. He did two uh, ultralights and he had a speed of 115 miles an hour on his. And before getting up to 100 miles an hour with some of the bigger quads, uh, beefier quads, uh, was a, a challenge, so these um, ultralights are fast and maneuverable. Uh, the big question is how are they going to hold up in races? I know they make them uh, so their arms are all replaceable. You could buy arms for probably about five dollars a piece and it'd probably take uh, 15, 20 minutes to change out a arm uh, after a race if you have a crash. Um, but um, most of the people that buy racing quads, <laughs> they buy them for how they could really bash them into trees and gates and things and survive. Um, so um, it's interesting, but I'm building four of them here. Uh, the first one is from iFlight. It uh, was $32. Uh, it weighed uh, just under 60 grams, or say 60 grams with the standoffs on there and it has uh, the narrowest arms it's only uh, seven millimeter wide and they're four millimeter thick um, so this is the narrowest or thinnest of the arms um, uh, my next one here is a mode 2 ghost uh, this quad was fifty dollars and it too weighed just under 60 grams and with the camera mounts and things you're you're looking at 60 grams um, all three of these will be 60 grams um, the mode 2 um, it has a little bit wider arms on it I think those are instead of 7 millimeter wide they're 9 millimeter wide so two additional millimeters so that should hopefully make it stand up stand out up a little bit better um, some other things are they did put the uh, little bumpers sticking out to protect the motors. The um, iFlight doesn't have that. And the other thing that I like about this is they used all titanium hardware. Uh, all your screws and things and nuts are titanium. It saved a couple grams, so that allowed to put a little bit wider arms on it and still keep the weight down to under 60 grams for the frame. Uh, then uh, this third one here is, um, oh, the total weight on this one was uh, 200, uh, the dry weight is 216 grams. I did put a um, 1300 milliamp hour Affinity battery on it and that brought it up to a all up weight of 377 grams. So quite a bit under 400 grams. Most quads, uh, racing quads now are 500 uh, to 550 grams. Um, so uh, you are saving quite a bit of weight on these, which really helps with the acceleration. Uh, this quad here is a hyper, uh, is a it's a floss. It's one of the uh, original ones that everyone's start, uh, tried to copy. You can see um, uh, some of the items were copied from one to the other. They do improvements and things uh, as they uh, copy them. Uh, but the floss uh, weighs uh, just under 60 grams, uh, 60 grams probably with your standoffs on it, um, camera mounts. And uh, it has, the arms are uh, back down to 7 millimeter wide by 4 millimeters thick. Um, and um, I'm hoping my build, it'll be a little bit heavier since I, I'm moving up instead of a 2204 motor, I'm using a 2204. Five motor from Hyperlite. Um, so I'm hoping my build should be somewhat between the two, maybe closer to this one, probably um, 235 is what I'm hoping for my dry weight. Uh, some, some of the other things, I got a uh, shark fin to put on there for turtle mode. Uh, I got a Fox Deer uh, Predator uh, micro camera. I heard that these are the best, so I'd like to try one of those. Um, and I haven't really decided what I'm going to build on this. This one here is the Rip Light. 
uh, from White Noise. It's a $50 frame. Um, I got it turned around. $50 and uh, it weighs 76 grams, but it does have five millimeter thick arms, so it really seems like it's pretty beefy. It's going to be tough to break one of these. Seems like it's going to be tough on any of them, but I know people have been breaking them, but I just wanted to know, you know, if you're going to break one or two arms per racing season, it's not bad, or one arm per racing season, but if you're going to break it every week, um, I, I might second think these or see what you could do. Hopefully something like this will be a little bit better. Uh, so this one, the width of the arm is nine um, millimeters and the thickness is five. And it, like I said, it weighs uh, 76 grams. Uh, the edges on this are beveled, so that's nice. Um, so they all look like they're great frames. Uh, I don't think you could go wrong with any of them. Um, Let's see, the, uh, if you're using a 30 millimeter stack, uh, your X, um, your iFlight, iFlight uh, works out good because it's a little wider. Uh, we're on uh, this model here, uh, the Ghost, I'm using a 20 millimeter format for the uh, stack, uh, which I, if it works good, uh, I wish there were more manufacturers out there, or more of them that were making the uh, larger ones. This happens to be a 28 um, amp ESCs 4-in-1, uh, where I know they make them 40 amp now, uh, but it uh, um, be nice to see some competition for those uh, and make sure that they're good. Um, I know um, Albert Kim, uh, he used a micro uh, stack or the 20, 20 millimeter format stack in a recent build and it seemed to work pretty good so uh, I think I'll try it and whichever one works the best I'll probably use that on the floss. I'll list uh, all the components and all the frames um, in the description below with links uh, along uh, with I do have uh, a build and a maiden flight on the iFlight and I'll list the link for that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below, and thanks for watching.